This video is going to cover setup details for a SOLIDWORKS Visualize render based around a user submitted model, the balconies that you see on the screen here. So we'll be going over several topics including preparing the model, setting up appearances and lighting, applying a custom HDRI environment, and any post editing that we need to do. There'll also be timestamps in the video description below if you'd like to jump ahead to any point. So the question is how do we get from this before photo to the after photo? So we're provided with an image of a prospective application for these balconies and we want to somehow render what the result would look like after these balconies are installed. So first let's take a look at the materials that were provided to us. We've got SOLIDWORKS CAD models, fairly detailed ones for both the single and double balconies. And we've also got a Photoshop project. Here I have it open in GIMP, uh, open source version of Photoshop, with some editing already done to remove the balconies that are already there. So um, in this case, this is going to serve as a useful backplate to bring into my rendering. But it's also pretty difficult to match perspective when working in an image editing tool. So uh, these windows here, to me, they stand out quite a bit, and I wasn't happy with them. And to get them to look really accurate in Photoshop would be quite a bit of work. So what I decided to do was do a little bit of extra modeling and just create a really basic model of the wall with the windows here. It's just a couple SOLIDWORKS features. And at the distance, view distance we're going to be at, we don't need that much level of detail there. Um, but by modeling these myself, I'm going to be able to have realistic reflections. So I just inserted these into the assembly. Um, and it's going to allow matching the perspective a lot easier inside Visualize. A lot of what you're seeing here is going to be time-lapsed since uh, this was kind of a raw recording of all the effort that went in, but uh, we'll be slowing down at key points to emphasize some of these key steps. Now an optional step, but one I do recommend is taking a look at the appearances that are already on the model and potentially cleaning up the appearance hierarchy. So a lot of SOLIDWORKS models have dozens or hundreds of appearances applied kind of haphazardly, but I find it very useful to just purge all these appearances off. You can do this by right clicking on the top level of the assembly and choosing to remove all appearances. And then we basically have a clean slate. So I'll need to reapply appearances, which is a little bit of labor, but I'll end up with a much smaller number of appearances in the end, which when I bring the project into Visualize is just going to make my life a lot easier. Because um, I may want to test adjusting these appearances, swapping different appearances out, and that's kind of cumbersome to do if there's, you know, say a hundred different appearances on the part. So you can see me here just working my way through applying appearances to the various bodies. In the end this did take a substantial amount of time, but I think it was worth it. And going forward, you can incorporate this as just a uh, modeling practice. Once I had the appearances set up the way I want them, I did a test import into Visualize. And it was at this point that I noticed I had some extra things showing up in there that I wasn't expecting. Um, so a lot of this process for me was just familiarizing myself with this model set, since I wasn't completely familiar with it. but. Visualize will import any hidden components or bodies, so that was something I struggled with with getting some extra parts here showing up. So I just had to go back to the assembly in SOLIDWORKS and do some cleanup again, uh, making sure that any components or bodies that were hidden in SOLIDWORKS that I suppressed them or deleted the bodies in the case of a multi-body component. So once I got the bodies set up the way that I wanted and all the components suppressed, I went back into Visualize, imported the file once again and brought in our image from Photoshop where we've removed the previous balconies as a backplate into Visualize. Now I can adjust the camera perspective and zoom and pan until I have the balcony roughly oriented the way that I want. Something not pictured here but what I do highly recommend is once you obtain this perfect perspective that you lock the camera and you can do that by just right clicking on it and locking it you can create an additional camera to navigate around the model if you need to, but it's nice to preserve those uh, good camera angles that you've dialed in. So next you'll see me doing just a little bit of further cleanup of the appearances that are already on the part to consolidate those. And then I'll be applying some new appearances in Visualize. So 
I don't want these windows to show through to those uh, photoshopped windows behind them. So I'm going to actually see, and a lot of this is experimentation, I'm going to see if I can use a metallic appearance like a chrome um, to just kind of show up as reflective. And that seems to work pretty nicely. So I'm going to run with that for now. Now as far as lighting is concerned, I'm going to take advantage of one of the features of Visualize Professional, which is to use a sunlight environment. So you can see me here generating a sunlight environment. This allows setting the date and time and location to get accurate lighting for your scene as if the main light source is from the sun. So you can see me here adjusting the brightness and rotation of that sunlight source until I have the scene reasonably well lit. And then now I'm going to bring in the second set of balconies. So I'm assuming here that I already have the camera perspective adjusted correctly. So when I bring in the second set of balconies, I don't want to move the camera at all. I want to use my transform tool to translate that second balcony until it's in the correct position. So assuming the perspective is correct, I shouldn't have to do any scaling or rotating of the second balcony. Although you may need to make minor adjustments like that to cheat it, I should essentially be able to just slide it into the correct position. And again, having that rear wall on there should really help to uh, compensate for any slight misalignments that you might have. Now I'm just making some minute tweaks to the second set of balconies, making sure I apply the same appearances to those that I had uh, overridden and visualized on the first set of balconies there. Now these semi-metallic windows uh, seem to be working okay, but I think it stands out pretty badly that we can't see any reflections in them. So at this point I decided to go online and see if I can find any HDRI environments that would somewhat match the reflections that we're seeing in the other windows here. So I just did a quick Google search for free HDRI environments and uh, found one of the popular websites here where I downloaded a couple different environments, dragged them in, and uh, adjusted them. I also turned down the roughness that I had applied to those uh, chrome material on the window so that I could see some of the reflections and I think it made the overall render quite a bit more convincing. From here on out it's just a number of subtle tweaks, tweaking things like the environment brightness, the roughness of different materials. Uh, notably glass is one that really requires a lot of adjustment, especially on this application where there's so much of it. So I ended up using the solid glass material and tweaking the index of refraction and color thickness to get it to appear just the way that I wanted. I ended up revisiting this project after quite a bit of time and uh, doing a little bit of more tweaks. Not sure if it really improved that much, but uh, here you can see some of the settings I was using. So for those windows, the metal with rough, slight roughness, 0.3. For the glass, I ended up at 1.25 index of refraction and uh, 8 millimeter color density, 0.25 roughness with the solid checkbox checked for the glass. Um, pretty much the basic white paint definition that's built into appearances for visualize. As far as the environment, uh, the steel bridge environment from HDRI Haven, went with the 8K model with uh, ended up at three brightness and 2.5 on the gamma, and you can see the rotation values and so on there. And I did end up locking that camera so I didn't accidentally override the <laughs> camera angle. Here you can see bringing the final rendered image into the original Photoshop project and then I'll be exporting that off as a PNG. And just to show off the end result here you can see again the original image that we started with and then the rendered result from SolidWorks Visualize. So I'd like to just summarize these steps again. As far as model preparation goes, I purged off all the appearances by right-clicking the top level, 
and using the remove all appearances command. So this is an optional step and it did take time to redefine the appearances, but I think it was worth it, especially for me where I didn't know the files very well in this case. Um, another thing we did model preparation wise was modeling up an actual section of the wall behind these balconies. And that just made my life easier with not having to worry about the uh, photoshopped backplate being perfect and also allowing me to get some environment reflections in there to add to the realism. As far as the appearances and lighting goes, we used uh, pretty much the standard appearances built into Visualize with some minor tweaks to the glass material and the reflective material for the windows to get them to look how I wanted. For lighting, I started off with the sunlight environment, which accurately lit the scene for me, but ended up swapping it out in favor of an HDRI environment in order to incorporate some semi-realistic reflections in our windows. Finally, we performed a final render and then slipped back into the Photoshop document to create the final result. I think there's still some areas for improvement, uh, but overall I'm pretty happy with how I was able to produce this. And I think going forward, you know, once you kind of establish these known appearances and presets, if this is something you're going to be doing routinely, you could get very fast at this. And thanks to Paul at RK Technic for submitting this model to us. So for all our viewers on YouTube, uh, let us know in the comments what you think about this type of content. It's a little bit different for us in terms of working on an actual model and you know, not going through every single step of the process, but kind of highlighting the key steps along the way. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions in the comments below.